Okay, this shirt has some, some significance to this video, although it's actually not their 50th anniversary anymore. That was last year, but, well, you know, whatever. <music> Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It feels like I just did my June playlist video, doesn't it? But well, anyway, it's, it's probably been less time than it usually is between my playlist videos. I know I didn't get my last playlist uploaded until like the 5th or the 6th of July. And uh, this one I'm actually filming, this is the 27th or 28th of, Ju of July. So I'm actually filming this one a little bit earlier. And I posted the last one a little bit later. So yes, it's a shorter span of time between playlists than it usually is. But I decided to go ahead and film it since I was in the mood for one thing. And also because I've got more than a videos worth of shout outs that I've listened to over the past 26 or 27 days. There's also a second reason why I'm doing this video it is because just a couple of days ago my brother and I took a spur of the moment almost trip up to Portland. Uh, we decided with COVID cases ramping up you know um, who knows how long how soon we're gonna how much more time we have until they decide to close everything down again if they decide to do that. But anyway, suffice to say, we didn't know when our next opportunity was going to be to visit, uh, well, for my brother, it's building supply stores. There's a uh, special kind of building supply store, the Habitat for Humanity Restores, you know, recycled or re repurposed building materials. My brother loves to pat patronize those shops because he's, he's into building and he likes to use recycled or repurposed things instead of buying new whenever he can. And of course, for me, it is record stores. And I was having, we were both having huge itches to get to our respective favorite stores, mine being Music Millennium. Hence the reason I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, last year was their 50th anniversary. So happy belated anniversary, Music Millennium. Uh, so yeah, I decided um, in the second half of this video, after I'm done with my playlist, I'm gonna talk to you about, uh, show you this stuff that I picked up at Music Millennium the other day. So it'll be fun. Two videos in one, a Portland Finds video and my playlist, which of course is, where I talk about uh, the music that I listened to in the past month just for fun, not for any other reasons related to the other things on my channel. This is just listening for listening's sake. So let's stop wasting time and get on with it, shall we? Now, most of my playlist is CDs. Actually, there's only one that is not a CD, just one LP that I listened to, at least one that I remembered to write down for my playlist video. I probably listened to other LPs, but I can't remember what they are now. But uh, yeah, the one LP I listened to was The Best of the Ink Spots. Uh, this is a two LP set that I found on the freebie shelf at House of Records, believe it or not. Uh, I mean, it's not in the best of condition. There was one song on one of the sides that, well, it actually, it skipped one time when I was listening to the album, but it didn't skip the next time I listened to it. So it's kind of one of those hairline skips, I guess you'd say. But otherwise, it's in pretty fair condition. Um, although there's one manufacturer defect that was in this this round of albums, or possibly just this one, I don't know. but. The label for side two, you know, the second side of the first LP, was actually on both sides of that LP. So side one actually has side two's label on, label on it by mistake. So it's a fun little group. If you're not familiar with the Ink Spots, they are a doo-wop group, uh, you know, pre-50s, pre-Motown. I think they actually started in the 40s. So they were one of the first doo-wop groups that really made it big. And they just have some fantastic, great songs in their discography. So if you, especially if you like doo-wop, pre-Motown stuff, check out the Ink Spots. They're just fantastic. They're great. And then on to the CDs. I have, well, 10, 10 or 11 CDs here. Uh, first one in the list of uh, stack of CDs is the Carly Simon Anthology. This is a two-disc set of Carly Simon's greatest hits. Uh, this is actually upgrading from a one-disc set that I had of her greatest hits before. And my sister was a big fan of Carly Simon. She had uh, three of her CDs in her collection that I inherited and I'm keeping. And uh, th those, all those CDs, incidentally, were put out after this set was put out. This one was put out in 2002, I think it was. So yeah, it was fun to kind of upgrade from one disc to, uh, to twice the bang for the buck, I guess you'd say. Yeah, I found this for $8 at uh, Epic Seconds, a store downtown in Eugene. So yeah, a good purchase, uh, lots of good stuff. Carly Simon is a good artist if you're not familiar with her. She's lots of fun. And then uh, another CD that, uh, this was actually in the freebies shelf at House of Records, uh, a two disc set of Hank Williams uh, for his 40 greatest hits, an early country star, one of the country pioneers. And this also is an upgrade from a one disc greatest hits that I had that was Hank Williams' 20 greatest hits. So, hey, do the math, right? But uh, yeah, I like the, 
a lot of the early country stuff like Hank Williams, Hank Snow, and uh, Patsy Cline, because uh, if you're not familiar with it, modern rock and roll, or at least early rock and roll, owes a lot, owes a big debt to country music, believe it or not. It's an interesting story of how, you know, country and gospel and rhythm and blues dovetailed to form rock and roll uh, by way of rockabilly, is basically rockabilly is kind of how the country influence uh, figures into it. But yeah, that's one reason why I wanted to uh, school myself on Hank Williams' greatest hits. So yeah, good country artist if you've never checked him out. And then uh, two other CDs that I found in the freebies section, believe it or not. I don't know why I'm so lucky. I don't deserve to be this lucky with the freebies that I found lately. Uh, Freedom by Neil Young. Yeah, I had never listened to this album before. And it's been really hard for me to get into Neil Young. And I, I don't know if it's because his voice has always been pardon me, forgive me, a little bit whiny, and I don't know if that's just because of the stuff of his that I've been exposed to, incidentally, until now, or or what, but uh, yeah, just I don't know if I've just been unfairly exposed to the wrong Neil Young, so to speak, but uh, I really, really enjoyed this album. It's, uh, it's making me, I'm seriously considering checking out more of Neil Young's finer albums. I know I need to check out Harvest. That's I think that one's uh, pretty high on everybody's Neil Young list, so uh, that's going to be my next foray into Neil Young, I'm pretty sure. And then the last one, I think, from this batch, from the freebie shelf at House of Records, is uh, Ryan's going to appreciate this one. It is Moving Pictures by Rush. And uh, and this is yet another artist, uh, kind of interestingly, finding threads between some of these mentions on this list. Uh, and Rush is another artist that I have had a lot of trouble getting into. And again, it's because of the voice of the lead vocalist, Getty Lee. Something about rock bands whose lead vocalists have a higher register, like Getty Lee, that make, makes me have trouble getting into them. Uh, but yeah, this is one of their most acclaimed albums. Uh, this is one, uh, one of Ryan's favorite albums. Ryan's uh, favorite album by this artist, Tom Sawyer, of course, is their, one of their biggest hits, is on this album. So, But yeah, I, I actually rather enjoyed this, so uh, that might get me to uh, listen to a little bit more Rush, possibly. And then uh, these next three, and, and this is kind of interesting, I'm thinking about doing a video at some point, I've actually thought about this since I started my channel two and a half years ago, a video on Greatest Hits series, you know, that the different, uh, the major labels put out, the ones that they have the same cover scheme and all that stuff, and uh, in this case we have three of the playlist CDs, you guys have seen these in the stores I'm sure, but yeah, Melissa Manchester, uh, Dolly Parton, and Janis Joplin. These I actually paid for, so uh, yeah, these those uh, last ones were the last freebies. Yeah, these I actually paid for, and yeah, all good stuff. I really enjoy them, and I'm not sure why the Janis Joplin CD has the black tray in it, because the one of the trademarks of the Playlist series is they have white trays. So anyway, that's not really here nor there. I just thought I'd mention that. I had another Janis Joplin compilation a while ago. Don't know what happened to it, but I'd never had a Dolly Parton or a Melissa Manchester compilation until now. And I, I kind of like collecting these different series, like the Sony Essential series. And as I said, I, I want to do a video on these various series, the ones that I have in my collection of those series and stuff. So you'll probably see that uh, sooner or later on my channel. So consider this a sneak preview of that. And now this next group is one that I had checked out a long time ago, years and years ago, back in, was it 2003 or right around 2003 when they first started out, and uh, they, there's something about them that I didn't really care for, but I thought I'd give them another try. They were in the bargain section, and so it is the first two albums by The Polyphonic Spree. Uh, this is the beginning stages of The Polyphonic Spree, and uh, Together We're Heavy is their sophomore album, and they're kind of, they're a collective, I mean, you can see this is, and yes, this is the size of the group, approximately. They kind of, they have almost like a revolving door of uh, members. They come in and out all the time. But it's, yeah, it's kind of this new agey, 60s hippie throwback kind of musical collective that they do pop kind of stuff. It's actually really kind of interesting. Um, and it, it's, as I said, it's grown on me, uh, you know, now that I've rediscovered them, given them another try. I kind of like them, so uh, as as you will see evidence of that in just a minute or so when I show you my Portland finds here, and then a uh, couple of CDs that I uh, a very very good friend of mine uh, was generous enough to uh, gift me. Uh, he was doing a, a CD cull recently, and he offered me up, you know, showed me a list or pictures of ones he was getting rid of, and I chose two of them, and I'm going to show those two to you here. One of them is a uh, an industrial rock act called. Stabbing Westward, and this is their uh, second album. 
wither, blister, burn, and peel. And uh, yeah, they're they're kind of heavy. They're they're on the heavier side of what I usually like, but I, I kind of like these guys actually. I, I here I go talking about the uh, uh, greatest hits series, the essential series from the Sony label group. Uh, they put out an essential stabbing westward that I picked up for, in the bargain bin a few months back and listened to, and I kind of like the sound of. So when my friend offered up this CD in his uh, castoffs, I gladly took it, and uh, they, they're they're growing on me uh, so much so that I will show you in just a minute again. Um, evidence of how they've grown on me and uh, yeah but they're they're pretty good if you like kind of the heavy rock stuff with a little bit of electronic flourishes I mean that's kind of the um, one of the hallmarks of industrial rock so to speak is it's it's kind of in the vein of heavy metal but it's got a little bit more electronica uh, elements just little traces of electronic kind of stuff and then um, one that you just saw in my uh, backtracks video the Presidents of the United States of America. This is another one that uh, my the same friend that gave me the Stabbing Westward, he had this one up for grabs and I decided to go ahead and uh, uh, take him up on offering it and uh, I actually really enjoy it. They've, they're, they're, kind of, they're a little bit uh, a little bit weird, a little wacky with their stuff. So, uh, but yeah, some very catchy songs on there. And I actually liked it so much that over at uh, Epic Seconds, they had in the dollar bin their follow-up album, two by Presidents of the United States of America, and I uh, enjoyed this one as well, so yeah. I don't know if I'll go any further in their discography, but uh, yeah, I, I like both of these albums, so, you know, what can you say? You like what you like, right? So yes, that was my playlist of the stuff that I listened to over the past month-ish, and so now I thought I'd go dive right into the uh, finds that I found up in Portland. And uh, these first two artists will be very familiar to you, as I just recently mentioned them. I liked the albums that I listened to over the past month so much that I, when I found the uh, uh, subsequent albums in their discographies, I go ahead, decided to go ahead and pick them up. Polyphonic Spree, uh, The Fragile Army, this is their third album, as well as Stabbing Westward's, yeah, this is Stabbing Westward's debut album, Ungod, and Wither, Blister, Burn, and Peel is their sophomore album. So yeah, that's that's right. So yeah, and yeah, that's this was... Um, some of the more standout songs on their Essential CD were off of this album, so that's why I decided to grab it. You know, $7, which is eh, a little bit more expensive. More, it was some of the more expensive, one of the more expensive CDs I got. Uh, but yeah, about half the CDs I picked up were actually in the bargain section, so I paid $2 or less each for almost half the CDs I brought home. So hey, how can you go wrong for those prices, right? So, and uh, then, yeah, the next few, I decided to pick up a couple of uh, gaps in my discography. Uh, Madonna, Like a Prayer. And then uh, Melissa Etheridge, her next album, Breakdown. This is her fifth album, I think. Not a Surf with their fourth or fifth album, Lucky. I've really gotten to like Not a Surf lately. Good indie rock band. And Brad Paisley. What can I say? I like Brad Paisley. He's. Uh, I'm working on collecting all of his albums. I think I'm only missing one. I was able to get three of uh, fill three of the holes in his discography on this Portland trip. So yay! And then uh, actually for two dollars. I found a Beck album, Modern Guilt, that I did not have. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge, huge Beck fan, but if I'm going to find an album for that price, the one that I don't have yet, I'm going to pick it up and check it out. Because he's, he's kind of like a musical chameleon, isn't he? He has a different mood on nearly every album, so you don't know what you're going to expect in the next album. So, And then uh, I talked about this group in my last playlist video, I believe, Hoover Phonic. Uh, this is their third album, The Magnificent Tree. And yeah, they're they're an interesting. I think they're trip hop, uh, something right along the lines, or right along the borders of trip hop, anyway. But yeah, a very interesting group. And another gap I filled in my discography is Fastball. Picked up their yeah, this was just a dollar ninety five. Uh, it's uh, yeah, their third album, The Harsh Light of Day. Actually, no, it's their fourth album. I think I'm not sure. I've lost count. And then um, an artist that I've uh, I've been meaning to pick up his studio albums, or at least start picking them up for a while now, because uh, for years up until now, all I've had was his greatest hits. Not counting his more recent stuff, I've got three of Yusuf's albums from the last decade or so. Uh, Another Cup is one of the best albums I've heard in a while, so just, just putting that out there. But yes, Cat Stevens. I found Tea for the Tillerman for $2. It's got a couple little scuffs on it, but hey, for two bucks. Why not? And it is the uh, a recent remastered reissue of it, as well as the te teaser and the fire cat. His other, probably his other most well known album with the, his most well known songs on it. So and this again, this is the remastered edition also. So if if you're going to start with the Cat Stevens uh, individual studio albums, start with those two. Those have 
fantastic songs on them. And then uh, Garrett is going to be uh, pretty uh, happy with me with this one. And this is, again, this is one that I owned a long time ago, got tired of, and traded in. But I decided, hey, you know, after re-listening to his debut album a few more times, I thought, you know, i got to pick it up again and see if I was too hasty in getting rid of it. Blake Lewis, his uh, sophomore album, uh, Heartbreak on Vinyl. My memory is uh, not the best today. But, uh, yeah, and $1.95. I mean, why not, honestly? And then uh, another CD, and I threw in a couple of things here, uh, conflated some recent finds at Epic Seconds with, uh, you know, most of this stuff is Portland finds, but a couple of these were found at Epic Seconds before my Portland trip. And this was one of them, uh, Flamingo by Brandon Flowers, his debut solo album. This is the deluxe edition, and I found it for two and a half bucks. Yeah. You get some good bargains when you're in, you know, certain places in the country are really starved for, for record stores, and I... I, I really feel for the you folks who live in those areas where CDs are hard to come by, but in the Northwest here, record stores are plentiful enough that you can find steals at a lot of these stores. It's just amazing. And uh, But yeah, I got that one at, uh, <clears throat> at Epic Seconds a week or so ago, and not even having listened to it yet, I decided to go ahead and pick up his follow-up, uh, The Desired Effect, at, uh, and this was at uh, Everyday Music, I believe. So yeah. Five bucks, so you know, not a bad price at all. But uh, so now I've truly completed my Killers discography. Now that I've got t uh, both of Brandon Flowers' solo albums. So, and then uh, Butch Walker is—you uh, know him as a producer, probably, but he's put out a few solo albums. I've got one of them. I've had him had it for a while, and this CD, I've seen it the last three or four times I've been to uh, Everyday Music up in Portland, and kept passing it up and passing it up, and. Uh, I kind of had the you only live once mentality coupled with you don't know when your next trip up there is going to be so I decided to get this one as well as a couple of other things that I had passed up on for a long time you know for several of uh, my recent visits so yeah had to pick this one up just to listen to it I don't know any of the songs on it uh, at least not that I know of so I'm gonna have fun listening to that uh, yeah I like um, Butch Walker's production work so I'm bound to like this one as much as I like his other solo album that I have and then this is another one that I've been looking for for a while and finally found. Uh, George Michael's um, Songs from the Last Century. This is a covers album of stuff that he he's uh, from the 40s and 50s and up to. I think there's some stuff from the 70s and 80s as well on here. So just a wide uh, range of uh, dates of songs that he puts on here. And one of the songs on here that kind of sold me on this album was he covers my favorite Doris Day song, Secret Love. So... Plus, I mean, it's, it's George Michael. You're going you're gonna to have good results when you listen to George Michael nearly every time. So, And then uh, the other one in this stack that I actually picked up at Epic Seconds and not at uh, in Portland, this guy, I've been wanting to check out his stuff for a long time. And I actually, I think the last time I was up in Portland, I picked up one of his CDs. And it was, uh, you know, it was not in one of those, you know, locker things. So I could open it up and check the, inspect the condition of the CD, which I always like to do, and that was one of the very few that I didn't do that to, with, and I ended up coming home with an empty CD case. So, yeah. You figure the odds, it's going to be Murphy's Law, that the one you don't check is actually going to be an empty CD case, and, you know, it's two over two hours away to Portland, and for a $2 CD, it was just not worth the effort to go back up there to gripe about it, so just figure, you know, flush $2 down the toilet. But anyway, long story short, Chet Baker. This is a, uh, a Hear Music compilation, and Hear Music is the Starbucks label. And I've got a few of them. Uh, most of them I got from my sister's collection, and I can't, I would name the ones that I've got off the top, but I can't remember off, off the top of my head. But Chet Baker was one that I, she did not have in her collection, in my sister's collection, so I decided to pick it up. And because, yeah, I'm, I can't wait to listen to this one. I haven't listened to it yet, but uh, yeah, Chet Baker is one of the legendary jazz artists who's got a tremendous reputation, but I've never taken the time to really check out his stuff. And so I am really anxious to play that one. That's going to be a nice afternoon, winding down, chilling out kind of thing, or evening, if I can't figure out something to watch on TV or something. So. And then the last item on my Portland Finds list is another thing that I've been looking for for a while. It is, I'm not a huge fan of movie musicals, but this is one of the few that I enjoy. Grease, the, uh, the classic one from the 70s with John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. And this is the deluxe edition, two discs, with some, uh, you know, some karaoke sing-along versions, instrumental versions, remixes on the second disc, and as well as, I think, some bonus tracks on the first 
disc also. So yeah, it's just packed to the rafters with uh, all sorts of music. And I actually saw this one when Borders Books and Music was having their going out of business sale in Eugene. I saw this there and was going to get it and I passed it up. And ever since then, I've uh, been kind of half looking for it when I didn't have too much other stuff on my list. Never really found it for a decent price until this week and at uh, up in Portland. It was $8, so I figured jump on it. The discs are in spotless condition. So finally, uh, you know, what, 12, 13 years after Borders closed, I finally got it in my hands. So, hey. As I said, one of the few movie musicals that I really enjoy, but I really enjoy it. So that uh, was definitely worth $8, I think. So, yeah, there you go. Well, that covered a lot of ground, didn't it? I hope I didn't make this video too long, but anyway, that'll do it for my playlist slash Portland Vines video for July of 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe and healthy out there, everyone. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.